Hello and welcome to another Sunday School Lesson Review broadcast for Sunday, July 18th, 2021. The lesson review is taken from Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, verses one through nine. And I am your host, Minister William Gadsden, and I greet you in the exalted name of Jesus Christ. You see, it is Jesus that enables us to get the word of God out to you, the listening public. We originate from the Greater Peace Missionary Baptist Church located in the Colleen Fort Hood, Texas area. Our address is 4201 Zephyr Road, Colleen, Texas 76543. You can reach us by telephone at area code 254-680-4378. If you prefer to reach us online, our website is www.greaterpeace.com and you can also communicate with us by email. Our email address is greaterpeacembc at peoplepc.com. Now we at Greater Peace Missionary Baptist Church provide a variety of services for your Christian growth. A complete schedule of services and activities can be viewed on our website. So please join us in extending God's kingdom here on earth. I am your host, Minister William Katzen, and I thank God for you supporting this ministry. Now let us pray before beginning our Sunday School lesson. Lord, it's again that we're here. I am here and those that are listening will be listening to gain a little bit more knowledge of your word. I ask that you go with me, Lord, as I present your word. Help me to present it in the way that you would have me present it. Help the Holy Spirit to be with me. Help the Holy Spirit and help those that are listening, that is, to ask the Holy Spirit to guide them as well. Because if the Holy Spirit guides us, we will be led in the right way and in the right direction. I thank you, Lord, for another week that you've guided us and led us. We don't necessarily deserve the week or the time that you've given us, but we thank you for it nonetheless, Lord. And go with us and go with me as I go through this lesson. In Jesus' name is my prayer. Amen. Now, for my introduction, I must apologize for the length of this lesson. It, I try to keep my lessons to less than 30 minutes. However, this lesson will exceed 30 minutes slightly. So please forgive me for such a long lesson, but I feel I need a little more than 30 minutes to fully address this lesson. And in reality, I don't really fully, I can't really fully address it in that time span. But that is what we allotted. And I think I don't want to waste your time listening. So I just want to make sure you get the points across to you about this lesson. So to begin the lesson with my introduction, Important events that occurred before the time of this lesson included the following. In 712 BC, the Babylonians and Medes defeated Assyria. Remember, Assyria was that country that uh, was invading Jerusalem, and God sent them back home with no, with, and, being de and defeat, they were defeated as well. But Babylon uh, deported the Jews uh, when Babylon defeated Assyria, and then they came in and they basically, uh, uh, about 486, they basically uh, took the Jews and sent them to Jew back to Babylon. So Babylon deported Jews to Babylon during the three different periods between 586, but that is, but 586 BC was the final battle where Nebuchadnezzar deported all the Jews except the very poor to Babylon. And he also took all of the treasures of the, the temple and took them to his, to, to uh, Nineveh, not Nineveh, uh, Babylon. And he put them into the house where his God was, all of his treasures of his God was. So Nebuchadnezzar, the final battle when Nebuchadnezzar deported all the Jews except the very poor to Babylon were, where they spent 70 years as subjects to Babylon. Now, God told Daniel that Judah would be in captivity for 70 years. Now, prior to the 70 year limit, Babylon was defeated by the Persians and Medes. So Babylon defeated uh, Judah, and now they're defeated by the Persians and Medes. Cyrus, the king of 
a Persia of the Persian Empire. Now, now, and basically, he is the first king. First, this is the first year as his king, as king of Persia, and the Lord moved him to allow the Jews to return to Judah, and it is described in Ezra, the first chapter, verses one through eleven. The return, what uh, how Cyrus was motivated to return, let the Jews return to to Judah. And uh, I will read those for you, those verse 11 verses, starting at verse 1. It says, Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and also put it in writing, saying, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth the Lord God of heaven has given me, and he has rec and he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Now who is among you of all his people? May, may his God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is God which is in, it, in Jerusalem. And whosoever is left in any place where he dwells, let the, the men of his, this his place help him with silver and gold, with goods and livestock, besides the freewill offerings for the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. Then the head of the father's house, houses of Judah and Benjamin, and the priests and Levites, which were all with, with, with all whose spirit God had moved, arose to go up and build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. And all those who were around them encouraged them with articles of silver and gold, with goods and livestock, and with precious things, besides all that was will, all that was willingly offered. King Cyrus also brought out the articles of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had taken from Jerusalem and put in the temple of his gods. And Cyrus, king of Persia, brought them, them out by the hand of uh, Mithradek, the, trans, the treasurer, and counted them to Sheshbazar, Sheshbazar, the prince of Judah. This is the number of them, 30 gold, uh, ca them counted them out to basically 30 gold platters, 1,000 silver platters, 29 knives, 30 gold basins, 410 silver basins of, of a similar kind, and 1,000 other articles. All the articles of gold and silver were 500, uh, Five over well, five thousand four hundred articles. All the articles of gold and silver were five thousand four hundred. That is what they were saying. And all these uh, Sheshbazar, Sheshbazar took with the captives who were brought from Babylon to Jerusalem. So the phrase "God works in mysterious ways; His wonders to perform" makes sense here. One must bear in mind that the decree of Cyrus the Great covered both the northern and southern kingdom Jews, because when Babylon defeated the Assyrians, the, hand, the land where the northern kingdom Jews lived became part of Babylon, Babylon's, the Babylonian Empire. And since the Persian defeated the Babylonian Empire, Jews of both the north and south were part of the kingdom of Cyrus. Now, not all of the Jews would return to the homeland, and reasons for this included. First of all, the northern Jews had lived in the land since 722 BC, and Cyrus made his, his edict in 538 BC, a difference of about 140, 184 years. So most of the northern kingdom Jews had assimilated into the culture of Assyria and Babylon over that 184 years. Therefore, they had very little common in common with their former country because um, unlike Judah, they had observed cash, calf worship 
and thus they did not have strong relationships with God. Also, those from the northern kingdom who knew God had died, and by now, after 184 years, a totally new generation existed that had no knowledge of God because they had not been taught or did not know, want to know about the covenant God had with Israel because Jeroboam instituted calf worship in their land. And he deported the priest of God to back to Judah. Judah, however, had only been in captivity for 70 years. And although many children had grown up in captivity, they probably knew about God. But many Southern Kingdom Jews were old and could not survive the approximately 1,678 mile trip to Judah. So they didn't go. But Cyrus was not sending the Jews back to Jerusalem empty handed, however. He would be dictating that the returning Jews be provided with things that they would need when they return. Likewise, the 54 hundred items from taken from the temple by Nebuchadnezzar would be traveling with them for the temple because Cyrus believed God was directing him to let the Jews rebuild the temple and city and he was giving them everything that was taken from the temple and and things that he felt would uh, need they would need to build the temple in Jerusalem including animals sacrifice animals for sacrifice now, the returning Jews would be afforded protection during their travel to Judah. Zerubbabel would be first, the first one to lead between 42,600 Jews, if you believe one historian, or 50,000 Jews, if you believe another historian, back to Judah. Now, there were millions of Jews deported from the North and, southern, north and South Kingdoms, but only a fraction returned back to Judah in 586 BC that the decree of Cyrus the Great allowed. They took 20 years to when they got back to rebuild the temple. And in 458 BC, Ezra led 2,000 men and their families back with him by order of Xerxes. Ezra was a priest and scribe and he had been given authority by Artaxerxes to administer the affairs of the Jude of Jude of the Judah of, of Judah, that is, including teaching them the law. His duties included educating the people on the covenants and commandments of God. Now, in 445 BC, some 13 years later, Nehemiah will lead a small group of Jews back by order of his Artaxerxes because Nehemiah requested that he be allowed to go to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls and gates. A fellow Jew was in Persia and uh, Nehemiah inquired if the walls and gates of the city were completed. The fellow Jew told Nehemiah that, he, that uh, the walls and gates had not been completed. And this saddened him when he was told about the news of the city walls and gates. Now, Nehemiah was a cupbearer for King Artaxerxes, and his duty was to taste everything before the king ate or drank anything to avoid poisoning the king. King Artaxerxes noticed that Nehemiah was not sick, yet he was very sad. Upon asking what was wrong, Nehemiah stated he was disturbed that after nearly a century, the walls and gates of Jerusalem were still not rebuilt. Now the king gave Nehemiah a leave of absence to go to Jerusalem to complete the walls and gates. He also gave Nehemiah letters authorizing his travel and the king provided a large number of soldiers to travel with him for protection. Nehemiah requested and received letters authorizing him to cut trees from the royal forest uh, in the area to rebuild the gates of Jerusalem. Now, upon arrival to Jerusalem, Nehemiah and a few men conducted a tour of Jerusalem at night so Nehemiah could see the actual state of the gates and wall of the city of Jerusalem. Nehemiah discovered that virtually nothing had been done to rebuild the walls of, 
or gates of Jerusalem. The Jews living in Jerusalem had not done much to the walls of the city, and only major and the only major thing that they had completed was after 90 years, they had completed after 90 years was after 20 years, they completed the temple, 22 years actually, that they completed the temple. Now, Jerusalem in effect was an open city, no walls, no gates. Anyone could enter because there was nothing to stop them from entering the city. And the city was very, had very little organized structure for governing. So being able to go into Jerusalem whenever you wanted to didn't give them any control over the city itself. So this was a bad situation. Jerusalem had 10 gates in the past that needed repair now, and the entire wall needed to be rebuilt. Most of the material for rebuilding the wall was nearby. That is, when they tore down the walls, they didn't carry the material away, they just left it in place. Now, the Babylonians, uh, uh, Nehemiah gathered the people from surrounding areas and also, of all places, he got the people from Jericho. And he spoke to them about how God had spoke to him and made it possible for him to come to Jerusalem. Nehemiah organized the people to build the wall and gates. For example, the priests were instrumental in building, in rebuilding, that is, the sheep's gate. Men and their families from all our occupations built gates. So building the gates was a family affair in some cases. A certain family would volunteer to rebuild a particular gate, and that's how they were rebuilt. There were three individuals that did not want the gates and walls repaired initially. Uh, repaired. And initially, they simply ridiculed the Jews as they built the wall and the gates. But later, as the wall progressed, they attempted to stop the work with physical force. But Nehemiah armed the people working on the walls and the gates and had the remaining people work. Basically, they were working along with them. They, some of the people were guards and they were watching out for enemy coming and the other people worked. And they did this day and on a daily basis, day and night. Now, the enemies of the Jews were Sanballat and Tobiah, but God allowed Nehemiah to repair the wall and gates in about 52 days. Now the length of the wall was about 2.4549 miles, and the average height that was about 39.37 feet, and the average thickness was about 8.2 feet when finished. Now that just completes my introduction. Uh, it's taken up quite a bit of time, I realize, about that, but I, I hope it gives you an idea of, of the situation it was in, in hand when Nehemiah returned to Jerusalem. Our lesson title is Nehemiah Combats Derision and Danger. The lesson text is taken from Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, verses one through nine. The golden text is Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, verse nine. And it reads, Nevertheless, we made our prayers unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. The lesson sections include three sections. First section is enemy mockery, Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, verses one through three. Second uh, section is prayer and perseverance, Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, verses four through six. And the third section, enemy threats and more prayer, Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, verses seven through nine. So let's get started with enemy mockery. Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, verses one through three. Verse four reads, but it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. Now the Moody Bible commentary states that Sanballat was a governor of Samaria, but he was subject to Artaxerxes, king of Persia, just as Nehemiah was. The letters from Artaxerxes that uh, Nehemiah carried with him validated, were validated by the king, king's men and Sanballat could not defy the king, but that did not stop him from mocking the Jews. And he was very angry about the king allowing Nehemiah to rebuild the wall and gates of Jerusalem. Now the validation letters essentially made Nehemiah the governor of Judah. Thus Nehemiah was equal to Sanballat 
in position and power. Now, verse two reads, and he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria, that is, uh, Sanballat did, and said, what do these feeble Jews, what do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stores out of the, the heaps, the stones that is out of the heaps of the rubbish which were are, are burned? Sandalot met with his fellow governor, Tobiah, who was the governor of one of the many clans of the Ammonites who lived east of the Jordan River. Judah, before Nehemiah arrived, was under the and under under un, underserved and unrepresented unit with, with, with respect to the Persian kingdom. Uh, they didn't exist until Cyrus allows them to go back. And so now you have a new uh, governor into an, and you are basically installed a new region within the kingdom. So up until now, the, he tolerated the Jews, that is Tobiah of uh, Sandalai did, because they were not a threat to his power. However, now the situation has changed. The appearance of a new governor for Judah meant that the power of these two governors would be diminished because the new governor had the legitimate letters from the king giving him authority and authorizing him use of the royal forest and other resources of the region. Sanballat spoke to his men and the Samaritan army and ridiculed the appearance of, the, of Nehemiah. He said that the feeble Jews are trying to fortify themselves. Do they think they can build a wall using the stones left in the heaps of the rubbish? Oddly enough, that's exactly what they did. Then verse three reads, now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him and he said, even that which they build is a fox. If a fox goes up the wall even shall even break down their stone wall. So Tobiah the Ammonite was with Sanballat when he ridiculed the Jews. He added his insults by saying, the Jew, if the Jews did build a wall, if a fox walked across it, it would fall down. Now imagine building a large wall and a fox walking, a small fox walking across it and, and it's tumbling. So this is the atmosphere that Nehemiah faced, but he put his trust in God and went about doing what he came to do to rebuild the city walls and gates. And that is our end of our first section. We go to our second section, and that is prayer and perseverance. Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, verses four through six. And verse four reads, Hear, O our God, for we are despised and turn their reproach upon their own head and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. Nehemiah tells God that they are despised by their enemies, and he is asking that their reproach be upon their head. Now, reproach is a subtle form of prayer. Prayers of this nature look to the defeat of God's enemies without seeking to take personal revenge, but place trust in God that he will use his mysterious ways to produce uh, his judgments. Now their enemies should be punished. Their enemies should be punished because they have no respect for God, for the God of all. And verse five reads, and cover not their iniquities and let not their sins be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. Nehemiah is asking God to punish Sadbalat and Tobiah, but he is asking in a different way than most and most when they are angry with those that attack God's people. Nehemiah is asking God to punish the enemy of his people. Nehemiah is, Nehemiah's prayer is asking God not to forgive them uh, for this their sin because this sin is against God and God should not forgive them because they are attacking the builders of the wall and gates, but in reality, they are mocking God because they do not believe God can harm them. So Nehemiah is praying to God to punish Sanballat and Tobiah and others because they are mocking God and God should punish them for their acts. 
Now, this is similar to the prayer Jeremiah prayed when he was being persecuted because he was delivering God's words of warning to repent and follow God. Now, here is a prayer Jeremiah prayed from Jeremiah the 18th chapter, verse 23. A verse, chapter 18, verse 23. And it reads, But you, Lord, know all their plots to kill me. Do not forgive them their crime or blot out their sins from their, your sight. Let them be overthrown before you. Deal with them in the time of your anger. And so that uh, is verse 5. Let's go on to verse 6. So built we the walls, is what Nehemiah says, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. Now, despite the harassment from the enemy, the people continued to build the wall. And below are two versions of Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, verse six, that explains how the wall was built a little better, I think. Verse six from the NIV says, so we rebuilt the wall, uh, built the wall, Till all of it reached at high, till all of it reached half its height, for the people worked with all their heart. Now, if you go to the New Living Translation, it says, "At half the wall uh, completed, to half its height around the entire city, for the people had worked with enthusiasm." So, in other words, they're saying that this wall basically was completed and it was up to the wall was at, at half the height of what it was before and they were still working on it now at the above script as the above scripture points out the people continued to build the wall and they completed the wall completed completed half of the wall in its height around the entire city so now they had a wall it wasn't complete wasn't complete in height but it was complete enough to avoid people coming in. Now we get to the last section, and that is enemy threats and more prayer. And it's taken from Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, verses seven through nine. And it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the wall of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth. The enemies of Judah were very upset because despite their harassment, the wall around this entire city was completed, basically all the way up to half of its height. Now the original height of the wall was about 40 feet. So the wall was completed up to about 20 feet and the gates of the city were also completed. Thus, the enemies across, the enemy access to the city was denied them now. Now, verse 8 and 9 read, And conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayers unto the, our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. So the enemy still tried to defeat the Jews Jewish effort to rebuild the wall, completed that is, but the Jews and Nehemiah continued to pray to God and God allowed, gave them success in completing the wall. They talked of attacking the people working on the wall. The Jews also worked on the wall day and night and the workers had weapons by their sides ready to fight the enemy at any time. Guards were constantly present to warn of any attack both during the day and during the night. So we see here, that is basically the end of the actual Sunday school lesson. Uh, but I have a special notes that I like to kind of use as fill-ins to kind of give you a better picture of what happened from the times of Rubable came to uh, Jerusalem until the, uh, the time of Nehemiah. Now, it should be noted that this attack on Jerusalem by the enemies, that is uh, uh, Sanballat and, and Tobiah, by the enemies were nothing new. If you read Ezra chapter four through six, it describes when Zerubbabel returned to root to Jerusalem and Judah, what happened. The people from Samaria were the product of mixed marriage between the Jews left behind and the Gentiles that were brought 
in to pro, uh, populate the area after the, the deportation of most of the Jews to Assyria. Now these people asked Zerubbabel when he arrived if they could help build the temple and they were told they could not because they were not Jews. They were half breeds so to speak, but were a product of intermarriage. This caused the beginning of the feud between the Jews and the Samaritans that carried over until Jesus visited Samaria and reestablished a relationship between the Jews and the Gentiles. So the beast, basically the people that were left in Samaria had intermarried and now they came in and wanted to help uh, Zerubbabel rebuild the temple and Zerubbabel said, you can have no part of this because you're not Jews. And if they had a part of it, then they'd have to be basically, uh, the Gentiles were not allowed to all areas of the temple. So if they were allowed to help with the temple, then they would be going to places not allowed. If they were building it, they would probably be in areas that were not never meant for Gentiles to be in. So the surrounding governors sent letters to then King of Persia at the time, who was Artaxerxes, complaining about the return of Jews. Now this happened when Zerubbabel returned. Now this is not Nehemiah's turn, this is Zerubbabel in uh, 438 BC. Uh, and then at the time who was a, as a, a hazardous, and they complained about the return of the Jews. They stated that they were, the Jews that is, were rebuilding the city and temple, and this would eventually be a thorn in the side of the king because the Jews were a rebellious people. Now, Cyrus gave him permission to do this, but we're talking about 530 BC. This is about eight years, and Cyrus is no longer king. The king, and so they, he was not, this uh, Ahasuerus was not uh, familiar with all of this that's going on, the letter he received, but he read the letter and the king's sent a letter in reply in agreement with the governors that uh, that in one reason, that is one reason that is the temple was rebuilt, took 22, 22 years to rebuild because uh, the king said, don't let this happen. However, a letter the Jews sent to the new king, another king of Persia who was Artaxerxes explaining that King Cyrus had allowed the, the return of the Jews and gave them permission to rebuild the temple. Now a search was conducted and Artaxerxes agreed that Cyrus had authorized the Jews to rebuild the temple. So they began to rebuild the temple. But when Nehemiah arrived in Judah, the arguments began anew. A final note is for this whole lesson or kind of a, a sidebar you might say, is that Ezra, Ezra and Nehemiah in the Hebrew Bible are listed as Ezra and Nehemiah. That is, it is one book and not two as listed in the Holy Bible. Ezra was a priest and he taught the people about God's ways and how, he, how to serve him. He educated them as well in God's ways. Nehemiah, however, was a leader and eventually the governor of Judah and the two men were instrumental in establishing temple worship surrounded by a protected wall and gate. And that, my Christian friends, is the end of our Sunday School lesson. I hope something has been said that will be of uh, use to you to understand God's word and all of the things that he did in the Old Testament. Now let us close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I praise you for all that you've done for me. And I praise that this pray that this will be bestowed upon those that are listening as well, that they gain an understanding of you. And then when we, as I said always, when we gain a better understanding of you, we can serve you better if we desire to do that. I thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us, those that are listening as well as myself. Continue to be with us, Lord, if it be thy will. In Jesus' name is my prayer. Amen.